Hey friend, welcome to my podcast, The Fit Soul. I'm your host, Amy Ramsey. In this podcast, we will be discussing soul-filled strategies to unleash your confidence, increase your energy, and all the things healthy lifestyle. If you're a Christian woman who is ready to reach your God-given potential, walk worthy of your calling with abundant joy and energy, girlfriend, you are in the right spot. I mean, you only have one life to live. You might as well maximize it. Buckle in and thanks for listening. Hello, friends. All right, I've got a funny little story to share with you that happened at the gym the other day. And I have a feeling some of y'all are going to be able to relate because it's all around the box jump. Now, there are so many stories that are wrapped up in a box jump because it's one of these exercises that it's, I would, I would say it's more mental than it is physical, but that's just not true because it's pretty physical. So if you're not familiar with what a box jump is, it is a box. It's uh, like a square box, typically. They come in different sizes. Uh, 24, 30, 36 is standard, I think. And this box, what you do is you stand in front of the box and it's a plyometric explosive uh, movement. So you kind of dip down, you bend you bend up and you get force and you jump up on top of the box. You land on top of the box and you're supposed to stand all the way up. And then you either jump down or you step down. So back to my story at the gym. So I was at the gym early the other morning for my workout. I don't particularly like to work out really early. I only do it when I can't make it um, later in the morning. My body is actually not ready. Like physiologically, I am just not ready to get up and to to move quite like that until honestly around 8.30 or 9.30. I work from home. So it's one of those things that I get up, I have my quiet time, I have my worthy morning routine. And then I really prefer to get some work done. And then I like to head to the gym, knock out my workout. All right. So it's early in the morning. My body's not quite prepared and quite ready. But we had circuits, this particular workout, and there weren't a ton of people at the gym. So it was me and this one other girl, and we were, we got counted off and we're told to go to circuit number two. <laughs> and there were box jumps, and I'm standing in front of it. It's time to start going. I think we were working like 30 seconds on or 45 seconds on, whatever it is. It's like a little Tabata type of station. And I'm getting ready to jump up on top of this box, but let me tell you, my body, number one, was not ready. It just wasn't warmed up enough. You know, the older you get, you got to warm up. You got to make sure you're really warmed up. I just wasn't warmed up e- enough yet. And I always have to overcome some fear every time I jump up when I'm getting started. Once I get started, I'm pretty much okay. But it just takes me a hot minute to get my mind wrapped around getting my body to jump high enough to land on the box and that I'm okay and that I've got it. It's this mental thing. And then once I jump up maybe two times or three times, I'm actually okay. It's almost like I have to get that proprioception. I have to get my body knowing where it's going, where my feet are landing. But before I do that, this particular morning, I'm looking at the box and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I am not ready for this. Uh... And then I started to psych myself up. (laughs) I was like, ugh. And then I kept thinking, okay, it's time to go. I'm like, I'm supposed to be working out right now. I'm supposed to be jumping. And I couldn't get my body to cooperate um, and and get past the fear that, oh my gosh, I'm not going to make the, I'm not going to make this jump. Anyway, as I'm hesitating and I'm like psyching myself out and I'm starting to jump up and then I'll look ridiculous because I kind of get scared and I don't even really try. It's just, it's, it's a thing. The, the, the uh, coach, who is also my dear friend, and I love her and she loves me, says on the microphone in front of God and everybody, come on, Amy, you can do it, girl. You got this. You know, she's doing her job. She's trying to encourage me. And, and by the way, I, I'm in, 
I'm, I'm a personal trainer. I have been in the fitness space, uh, health and wellness space for over 20 years. Like this is, this is my space. I know what to do and I know how to, I know how to overcome this. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, okay. And then the cute little girl that's in the, in the circuit with me, who's a lot younger, I, I think she's in her 20s or something, had already flipped her box over and she's jumping on the very highest level, like major bad A, right? I'm like, okay, she's, and then she starts in too, to encourage me. Come on, Amy. Yeah, co- come on, girl. You, you've got it. You've got it. You've got it. You can do it. I'm thinking, I know I've got it. Like, I just wanted to look at them and say, I know I've got it. Y'all get off my back. I'm going to do it. So I had to get really focused to do it. And I had to get my ego out of the way. Have you ever been there? Like, (laughs) somebody's encouraging you. Like, come on, you can do it. And you're like, of course I can do it. I just need to get my nerve up. Just give me a second. Anyway, I did finally jump up onto the box and then I did it one more time and then I was good. I was golden. I was I started my box jumps. But that whole that whole scenario is really interesting because what neither of those ladies who were there to encourage me, they that all they were doing was encouraging me, which was amazing. But what they didn't know is that about 7 or 8 years ago, I have a um, box at my house. I've got a little gym at my house. And I was on the box. I was jumping, doing some sort of a circuit. And I was trying to get in as many rounds as possible. An AMRAP of box jumps. I was trying to do as many as possible. And I was killing it. Like, I mean, this was several years ago. I was like, bam, 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 bam. Like, jump, 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 right? Well, on one of the jumps down, my foot wasn't quite it landed a little bit turned under. And guess what? As I was landing down, I broke my foot and it hurt. Obviously it took, um, well, I went immediately had x-rays was given a, a boot. I don't do cast very well. So fortunately I was able to, um, wear a boot and then I had crutches and, oh my gosh, I crutches. Let's, I won't even talk about it. I don't even know how to use them. Well, they hurt my underarms. Um, if you've ever had crutches, you understand what I'm saying. But anyway, a long healing process because of, because of breaking my foot. And not only that, because I'm a bad patient, I rebroke, I refractured my foot in the healing process because I wasn't, I wasn't uh, <laughs> following the doctor's orders. But that's a whole nother story. Anyway, back to the box jump. What they didn't know is that I have baggage around the box jump. I can do it, but I have hurt myself really badly on the box jump before. In fact, as a trainer, I'll never forget this. One time I was coaching a class and um, one of my participants and friends um, was jumping up on a box. And at this gym, they were wooden. There were wooden boxes. And man, she, her shin, she, oh my gosh, we had blood everywhere. Wait, and I just scooped her up in, in my car and we, we hauled her off to the doctor right away. I have another friend, same thing, massive um, shin, I just blood everywhere. She didn't make the box and oh my goodness, she had some sort of a, all sorts of issues for months. I mean, she had, she had to get on IV treatment and I think she got a staph infection. I don't know, it was just awful. So in my mind, I've got true baggage over box jumps, but I know I can do it. I just have to get there. And not to mention, I've got a torn labrum in my hip. I don't want to sound like a, I'm complaining here, but um, I do have some issues and I have to be super careful on top of that box jump. So as I was thinking back through, (laughs) thinking back through that whole scenario and that whole, and that whole situation, I was just thinking to myself about how interesting it is in our lives that we know we can do something and there's some sort of an obstacle that's psyching us out from doing what we actually know that we can do. We know that that potential's inside there and, and, and if something is slowing us down, And so, um, people are maybe even cheering you on or you're listening to a podcast or you're reading a book and they're like, go do this, this, and this. And you're thinking, yeah, that all sounds good, 
but you don't know the baggage that's associated with doing something that I probably should be able to do. Well, the question is, is what do you do when the baggage is holding you back physically and mentally from moving forward? Well, I wanted to share just a couple of thoughts I had on this. And, and the first one is this, is take space, but not too much. <laughs> Let me explain. Sometimes we feel like we're behind. Like, you know, some other people are doing more. I should be further along in life. And like the girl at the gym, the girl that was in my little circuit, she was hammering out her box jumps and she looked amazing doing it. Number one, I cannot jump on a box that high. Number two, I can't jump that fast. Maybe I could when I was her age, but that is not something that I'm even interested in doing anymore. And my space that I needed to take to psych myself up was the space I needed to take to get prepared to do that. And I'm not going to go as fast or as high as she was. And that is okay. So whatever is holding you back, whatever that obstacle is, the self-doubt, you're not behind. Just you know, sometimes we just feel, we like stay in this vicious cycle because we feel like um, we're just not quite enough. And so I want to share with you, yes, you are. And don't stay in that settled space for too long because it's going to be harder to move forward and to take action action. It will cause more procrastination. The longer you stay there, like Mel Robbins says, the five second rule, five, four, three, two, one, go and force yourself, get on out of your comfort zone, force yourself out of your comfort zone. That's where true growth happens. You're not happy where you are, right? You're feeling settled. You're feeling stuck and it doesn't feel good. So you've got to push yourself out of that comfort zone but you may not be able to go as quickly as the as the chickadee next to you, and that is okay. All right, the second thing that I wanted to share with you is that in the spirit, you are not just a conqueror, but you're freaking more than a conqueror. So Romans 8, I it's a powerful chapter in the Bible, and, and it's um, so much, there's so many promises and so much power of where God is just sharing in here that you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. And that with the spirit inside of us, the spirit dwelling inside of us, the scripture tells us that um, in all of these things, we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than, not just a conqueror, honey, we are more than conquerors. And when you look at yourself as loved and chosen, and this is who I am in Christ Jesus, and the, his spirit rising within me empowers me that he's given every bit of his spirit to me as a believer. Like this is so powerful. What we have inside of us is so powerful, but unfortunately, when we don't tap into it, it's just untapped. It's just there. It's just dormant. And so don't leave it. Listen, you only get this one life to live. We're actually not promised tomorrow. We're just not. You might as well maximize the life that you have. And really, it's your heart that it's your heart's desire to to maximize the potential that God's placed inside of you. So knowing who you are helps you to show up at a higher level. One other thing that I, I wanted to share here too was to overcome that, to, how to overcome the anxiety and the fear cycle is to really stop. And I was thinking about um, Philippians 4, where it says here that don't be anxious about anything, but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. That is so powerful. I mean, just think about that for just a moment. How, where are you letting anxiety cycles and fear cycles literally sabotage your success for whatever area of your life that you, you're looking for some growth and for some change? Where is it? And, and, and God is saying right here in his word, don't be anxious about anything, but with prayer 
in Thanksgiving, go talk to him. And this is, this is my favorite. It says right here, in the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Bring your worries, bring your fears, bring your, your, um, your baggage, bring your brokenness, bring it all to God. Bring your anxiety, bring it all to him. And with prayer and with gratitude, he says, and bring it to me and I'll give you a peace. Whoo, oh my gosh, I just got chills. I'll give you a peace that passes all understanding. Oh, just, I pray, friend, that that just washes over you, maybe in a fresh way. You have the power to step out of the anxiety cycle and and to receive God's peace. You know, we've got that stinking enemy who seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. There's nothing more he wants to do than that. (sighs) So... I pray that this encourages you. I pray, I hope that somehow you're able to relate if you've never done a box jump before. I, I, I just hope that you're able to maybe that this resonates with you in some way. We've got to stop allowing fear to, to sabotage our growth and us moving forward. And so I hope you feel activated. I hope you feel encouraged and I hope you feel excited to, even though you've got baggage wrapped around whatever situation it is that you want to take steps to move forward. All right. Well, I hope this blessed you. And if it did bless you, if it did resonate with you, would you um, share this? Would you screenshot this episode? And would you, um, if you would screenshot this, put it in your social media and share it so it could help and encourage others to overcome obstacles, brokenness, baggage, and get moving. All right, friend. Well, thanks so much for being here. I will see you next week. Girlfriend, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I'm so honored you come back every week and that you share the Fit Soul podcast with your friends and family. Every time you share my podcast on Instagram or Facebook, I do a little happy dance. Make sure you subscribe to the Fit Soul Podcast where you'll never miss an episode. You can go to Podcast, Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify and subscribe so you'll never miss an episode release. And just know, I truly love bringing you excellent content and great guests to provide you motivation and faith inspiration to help you walk worthy. And one of the ways you can help me is to go and leave the Fit Soul Podcast a review. If you have just a moment, would you please go over and leave a review for the Fit Soul Podcast? Thank you again. I love you. And here is your reminder. You are worthy. Until next time. Bye-bye.